44 tournaments are in the books and only four remain in the 2014-2015 season. Welcome to the FedEx Cup playoffs. I'm Amanda Balionis. This is John Swanzak. Last week, the top 125 in the standings were solidified and starting this Thursday, everybody tees it up at the Barclays. They've all got a mathematical chance to win the FedEx Cup and the richest trophy in golf. Let's start with how it all works. All right, so it all begins in Edison, New Jersey with the Barclays. Of course, it's 125 players. And then from there, we head over to the Deutsche Bank Championship where only 100 will remain. It's of course at TPC Boston. Now this is where it really gets serious. We have a little bit of a bye week. And then we pick it up at the BMW Championship where only 70 players will be battling for those top 30 spots at Eastlake, of course, for the Tour Championship by Coca-Cola. That is where it all goes down. To make sure everyone has a mathematical chance of claiming the cup, here's how the points are reset once the Barclays kicks off at Plainfield this Thursday. Jordan Spieth, the man in the crosshairs right now with 2,000 points after the reset. He owns an 800-point advantage over number two, Jason Day. With players being sent home every week, those on the bubble have a lot on the line and a lot more pressure than those who have played consistently all season. Last year, seven players played their way from outside the number, inside the number. Remember Morgan Hoffman, who started the playoffs at 124, made that fabulous run all the way to the Tour Championship, finishing 26th in the point standings. Nine rookies have their sights set on making a run for the Cup this season. This has been one of the strongest rookie probably seasons and rosters we've seen in quite some time. Here are some notable players that have to have a strong finish at the Barclays and take a look at some of these names, some world-class players, some past FedEx Cup champions. And I am, uh, I'm gonna hone in on Jonas Blix here at 121. Not this season he's been looking for, but he has been coming into form. One of the best putters on the PGA Tour. We saw a little bit of it last week at the Wyndham Championship. So if he's able to get it going, I think he's going to be one that makes a really big move over these next four weeks. I like Luke Donald at 119. He's gone back to his old swing coach, Pat Goss. His short game is tightening up as it once did. And let's not forget, this guy finished third, third, and ninth in the final FedEx Cup standings in three consecutive seasons. He knows how to get the job done this time of year. You never can have a former world number one either, right? No doubt. Here are some things to know about the playoffs. Hunter Mahan, the only player to play every event since the FedEx Cup's inception eight years ago. Pretty impressive stuff. Mayhan's currently 77th in the FedEx Cup standing, so he will certainly have some work to do if he's gonna make it onto Eastlake. And of course, our defending FedEx Cup champion, Billy Horschel, he was the lowest ranked FedEx Cup champion entering the playoffs, showing that if you get hot at the right time, literally anything can happen. He's currently 45th in the FedEx Cup standings. Now, past FedEx Cup champion, Brant Snedeker, he is the only one to return to the Tour Championship the following year, so it's hard to back up the richest trophy in golf with another great appearance, but Billy Horschel, uh, certainly one who can get it done. So the question is, it's always the same this time of year, isn't it? Who will peak at the right time and play well? Clearly Horschel did it last year. Taking a look at the last couple of weeks, who do you think is heating up? My man, Brooks Kepka. Ah. He has not finished out of the top 20 since the first week of June. Yeah. He's one of these young players who's really fearless. This is a time of year where you're looking for a guy who's not going to back down. Yeah. There's no reason Brooks Kepka doesn't think he can win the FedEx Cup. I don't think he will. We'll get to our picks here momentarily, but I think he's going to be a force over the next five weeks. I Absolutely. Really do. I think I'm going to go Jason Gore and his game is certainly on point and he seems to have a lot of confidence and take everything in stride. That may really bode well for a guy like Gore and come on, he's one of the best guys out there. You got to root yes. for him, right? So I think it's I think it's that time. Are we going to make our picks? It's time for picks. All right. It's time for picks. We've secretly told one of our uh, other producers who we're picking, so we don't actually know. I'm going to let you go first, though, because I'm, I'm oh, doing great. Yeah. I usually defer to you. Rory McIlroy is not playing the Barclays. He's currently ninth in the point standings. We've seen players forego this first playoff event in the past. It hasn't set them back too much. He's going to slide down the standings a little bit, but I think he's motivated by having sat on the sidelines for about six weeks or so and watching Spieth dominate and watching how well Jason Day played and winning the Wanamaker Trophy. I think Rory certainly understands what it takes to win this time of year. He can get hot. Nobody can run the tables like McElroy. I really think he's going to run the tables here. You know, he, he may be able to run the tables, but I think there's one guy ahead of him in the official World Golf Rankings that I think may be able to run it even better. Jordan Spieth, not the outcome he was looking for in those last two majors, and I think maybe claiming the richest trophy in golf, that $10 million check, 
may ease the pain a little bit. Jordan Spieth always plays with a chip on his shoulder. Doesn't matter what the tournament is, the kid wants to win, and he especially wants to win probably the last tournament of the season, right? So never count on Jordan Spieth. Come on, Swan, you know better than that. Love it. <laughs> all right, so check out where you can hear and, of course, watch all of the Barclays beginning at 2 p.m. on the Golf Channel all the way to 6 on Thursday and Friday on Saturday. Uh, coverage begins at 1 p.m. all the way to 6 on Golf Channel and CBS. And we will begin at noon Eastern time. So wall-to-wall -wall coverage on Sunday until the final putt drops.